This is the gravesite of a queen who died in 9th century AD, Peru. Fast forward 1,200 years and she's been resurrected in 21st century Europe. All thanks to Oscar Nielsen, one of the world's only forensic artists, specializing in hyper-realistic sculptures of the deceased. I am aware that my job is a bit morbid, but as, as I see it, I'm, I'm more I try to bring life to all these things. In this video, we'll uncover the science behind it, his top tips for creating lifelike sculptures, and his most haunting discovery to date. She was found buried with a sickle placed over her neck. Welcome to my studio. Uh, please, follow me. This is my uh, library of skulls. This is actually originally a box for chocolates. It's the perfect size for an eyeball. <laughs> Before we properly dig into Oscar's treasure trove of body parts, just how scientifically accurate are these sculptures? Oscar is commissioned by actual archaeologists and museums who extract DNA from their findings, providing Oscar with key information about the deceased, such as skin, hair and eye colour, but DNA can't tell us the life a person has lived, so they study the bones for clues. Together we can uh, get a, a, quite an accurate and true image of, of an individual's uh, appearance. A 3D printed replica of the skull forms the base of his sculptures, but it's his obsessive artistry that brings them to life. So here are Oscar's top tips for sculpting a hyper-realistic head. Starting with the skull, Oscar adds pegs to reflect tissue depth. I also try to reconstruct muscle by muscle in the face. And it's about 17, 18 different muscle groups that, that I reconstruct in this, in this way. Each layer of muscle builds to form the skin. And for this, the right tools are key. So this is how I create the the pores and small wrinkles, but I can also use a well-used brush to smoothen out areas like this. Once he's happy with the face shape, Oscar creates a silicon mold, and then it's time to paint. Lucky for us, Oscar's got a cured body part ready to go. And very important when you paint skin, you work with small dots or small details to create the depth that does exist in the skin surface. I use uh, oil colors, and it's important to make these dots as small as possible. As you can see, it's, they should be almost hard to discover. This delicate dotting will take Oscar around three hours, and his eyes are just as detailed, made bespoke from each individual's DNA. Transparent layer of resin over the, the painted eye creates a depth to the eye, a convincing uh, um, illusion that it actually is a human eye. Oscar's pursuit for hyperrealism doesn't stop there. This is, if you like, the, the library of hair in my studio. So I have them uh, sorted out in different uh, tones and different colors. Try to find hair among friends and friends of friend. This particular head has taken Oscar three weeks of full-time, painstaking hair punching. Each reconstruction takes Oscar around eight weeks in total, from skull to face. One of his most haunting subjects is a woman known only as Socha, who died in the 17th century in a small Polish village. When they started excavating her grave, they found over her throat was placed a sickle and on her left toe was left a, uh, an open padlock. Very strange. What, what, what is this? <laughs> the only logical explanation can be traced from Polish folklore, which tells the story of Striga, a vampire. If their soul was not locked into the ground, they could come back and haunt us. So the, this tells a story that the, the people of the neighborhood, well, they were just uh, scared to death about this woman. But science revealed something else. The osteological uh, reports told us the story about a, a very sick 
sick young woman, she's not more than 20 when she passes away. She's suffering from some kind of cancer. I felt it was my responsibility to make her not become this monster, but, but more become a, a human being. Her life, it, it was not long, but for sure it was hard. And even after her death, she was not treated fair. For Oscar, these aren't just sculptures, they're humans too. When I spent so many hours working with these people from the past, they, they do become uh, sort of uh, mates <laughs> here in my studio. Of course they do. I can't help thinking about who they were, of course. What have they been through? What did they expect from life and how did life uh, turn out to be? And uh, it makes you humble uh, looking back at history from, from this point of view when you actually can sort of meet people from the past.